and it's there. And it's like saying that any moment is not important. It I is. Like, because I like it watching old neighborhood it. videos. I don't know. I like well, watching those, but again, there's a lot, you know that that's well, also, not me. Keep that's in mind that sketch for somebody else. That's oh, I know. Sketch yeah, too, that's what I'm which saying. Which means that like people wrote it. There was a series of editing processes, yeah, and yeah. then and then I'm not going to ever put a video up online unless I know it's a well produced video. Right, so yeah, yeah. that in and of itself is heavily curated. You know what I mean? Like the joy of improv, the joy of performance for me is just sharing it with that with the other people. Yeah, we, Same with teaching. I much prefer teaching level one because I like, like you said earlier, um, convincing people that they can do it. Yeah. That's my favorite part of the whole thing. When they break through, when I see on their little faces that they finally believe that this is something that they can do, it's the best day. It's, it's the best class. Uh, I just had one. I'm teaching a level one right now. And it happened on a class that does not usually happen on. There's this one class that we teach, and it's about group scenes. And usually that's the day when everything blows up. Because it's like we took the simple t- one-on-one, and now we threw six people on stage. How crazy is it going to get? Yeah. And this group just happened to have a good group mind with each other. So as soon as we did group scenes, suddenly everything fell into place. The games were playing. They were communicating. Everything was going well. And I was like, guys, I've never had this day be such a good day. Like, you guys just are so amazing. And they were all just like, and I could see in their faces, like, I can do this. This is something I could do. And it was the best to, like, share that with them in that moment. And, like, I'm an audience of one. There were six of them on stage doing stuff that they'll never remember again. I'm the only one watching, but just that experience was as good as a packed house of people all laughing at some experienced improvisers doing some good stuff. Yeah, I think I think new people are maybe the most fun to watch. And like a level two showcase, like the first showcase that we ever do at the Hideout, is usually super fun like they almost always go really really well uh, and and the longer that you do improv I think I think sometimes it gets hard to watch improv over time like you get to the point where it's it's a little tricky committing to just being okay sitting in a room watching improv and enjoying a show mm-hmm. which sucks but I think that's true about every art form like the more you get into it the harder it is to just watch it as somebody enjoying the thing mm-hmm. Uh, so for me, at this point, I have to really commit and have a glass of wine or two uh, mm-hmm. to lock in on an improv show. But those classroom experiences and those new shows where I'm teaching and I'm working with them and I'm seeing them have these moments of discovery, that never gets old. Like, that's always real easy to sit with. Yeah. That's a... Uh, so I, I, I've i never taught improv, uh, but I have worked... Uh, I've done several gigs where we did improv for, like, young children. And... Uh, the environmental marketing thing I was talking about. There was one time where we did it, and it's, just, it's a water conservation show. We go to elementary schools, we do an assembly. It's really great. You know, we have a person in an otter costume. It's called Safe Water for Otter. Uh, plug. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, and yeah, no, it's really cute. Uh, and we do it for like kindergarten to like third. And been doing it for like three years. And then one year, this past year, a uh, principal was like, hey, we want to sit down and have a Q&A with the kids after, which is weird, because normally we have to get the people out of the costumes, we're all sweaty and stuff, and then we pack the show up and get out before like before the parents come to pick the kids up and all this stuff. So the q and I was just like, what does that mean? Like an inside the actor's studio kind of thing? I was, you know, <laughs> like, because like the way they, the way they posed it is like, why do you, why do you... Like kind of like this thing where what do you do uh, performance? What do you want to? What do you? What made you want to do theater and stuff? It happened to be more about like it, it started off like why? What got you into water conservation? And it's like somebody paid me to get yeah, a lot of money. Um, that's you know like that's my thing. And then but the thing is is like the kids didn't really care about water. <laughs> like like we they just watched a forty five minute show about water conservation so they didn't really have any more questions we really nailed it in uh, <laughs> so the second like w- like we all went around and introduced ourselves and kind of just gave a very light background as to why we're doing what we're doing and we're all lying about water conservation you're like yeah and you know I grew up by a lake that was real pretty you know like, that kind of thing just trying to trying to puff up what we're doing 
but then all the kids started asking questions, and it was all like, what is improv and all this stuff? And they were just super interested in it, and I was like, it's been a minute since I've met some people like that, you know, because I, I love doing improv, I love, I love doing comedy, but the, the city of Austin, the regular Austinites... Uh, have a little bit of a jaded attitude towards it. I've walked up and like I've walked into like R- Royal Blue, and I was like two people in line, and there was like this lady. She was talking about it. She was like, "Man, this guy just came in and he just wouldn't stop talking about his improv group." And then Bill was like, "No, Jesse loves improv. Why don't you tell her?" And like like it was this thing that they sort of did to like fuck with each other. And, like made this <laughs> guy talk to her. Jesse clearly did not love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like, Jesse, Jesse literally went to the back to get away from this, and they're like, "Hey, Jesse," you know, like made her come out. So they were talking about this, and I was just like, okay, so I, I get that we're hitting a point of saturation with this, but uh, these kids were so into it. They were like, like, they had so many questions just about what improv is and, like, what, just, like, how you can, how, how that's even possible, you know, because they're just figuring out how to talk still, more or less, you know? Like, they just, like, they're learning how to write words down, you know? So they're just like, how do you make comedy instantly when I'm just... I can't even say spaghetti right, you know? Oh. And that was great. I got really into that. And it was just like, it was one of those things where I almost took it over, where it's like, we're improving right now. We're just talking. You see how this is fun and everybody's laughing, you know? And yeah, that that response is amazing. And I, like, I don't know. I could see that being super gratifying as a teacher. To like, I mean, because if you're teaching a class and those people are, like, the children I was talking to, you know? Like the difference the between children and adults teaching it, though, when you when you teach those different groups, is that the likelihood of the jadedness you're discussing in the, uh, in the you know, yeah, yeah. shop can, there can uh, is, is very high. And, in fact, the first two or, or three classes sometimes that I'll teach is breaking down that wall mm-hmm. of being, like... You don't have to be cool. Nothing about what you're doing has to be... Like, you can stop feeling like you have to be... No one has to be a jerk to each other. Like, and in fact, that's the num- That's the first thing I say when I walk in. I go, we're going to agree as a group of people to be nice to each other. Um, when <laughs> yeah. you try something, even if you think it's... If, even if you're... If somebody in your group tries something, even if you think it's dumb... You just say, yep, that sounds like a great idea. Let's jump on top of that because someday you're going to try something that's dumb and you need them to have your back. And we all need to try these things and see how it goes. And a lot of the people that I deal with in the world, um, especially when I do like corporate workshops and stuff, are very jaded. And I actually, earlier we were talking about like people who live an artist lifestyle versus those who don't. I like legitimately feel bad feel bad for these human beings who like don't don't have this joy don't have the ability to kind of let their guard down and just have fun yeah. i mean what's the point like i'm supposed to be angry about everything i'm angry about plenty of things but i don't need to be angry about like just chatting with people or like having a good time or like just playing around doing different things when you when i hear about people who like will make fun of improv i was like well they just haven't been indoctrinated yet they like just haven't had a good experience with it yet no i mean it's almost different than what you were talking about andy where you were saying that like sometimes it's hard to watch sometimes i think it's like the veil has been lifted for you so it's hard to watch something where you can literally see the mechanics it's like it's like being a puppeteer and trying to watch a puppet show and you're like ah i get how that works yeah like they're or being a magician, like you know the you know how it works, so it's hard to play that game. You, it's hard to allow your suspension of disbelief to be so thick that you can then watch this and enjoy what's going on. I mean, I will watch for. I get obsessed watching student shows where I'm all like, "All right, where's the third beat? Where okay, we've made two references to this thing. Give me that third one. What's going You're on?" Like a coach on the sidelines, you know. It's well, just a like... lot, right now, a lot of the improv shows I watch are groups I'm coaching. Yeah. yeah. So, like at the end, I'll have these little notes, and I'll be like, "Where was the third beat of the uh, <laughs> shopkeeper? <laughs> Where was the third beat of the otter?" Like you yeah, know, yeah. all these kinds. Imagine of Imagine you like things. walking up and down on the side of the stage with like a hat, and, like just throw in your headset, you know, like I don't because. Football, I think they have headsets. I don't know. Uh, you know like football! Those, hey, like, throwing you your head down sports. and stomping on I don't. Don't pretend don't. you know what sports no, are. No, I do not. <laughs> I think I think coaches get angry on the sidelines with something that looks like this right here, though. And I, uh, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I just I I, I feel Kidding like people when people make fun of improv. Though, yeah, when just, people are like, jaded, it's like, well, that's your life choice. That's yeah. the way that you wanna. You gotta do everything life. through yeah. that lens, and that's. I sucks. think that's the cool thing about improv is there's so much pain in the world and stress and anxiety, and people have all their own weird stuff that they're coping with and that they don't feel confident about and things they feel like they can't do and improv is a tool that cracks that open like it's it's just a I mean you could do anything creative and you would get some value out of it you could like learn to play guitar or whatever but I think improv gives you that creative outlet and then also a set of these meta tools that are like hey say yes to things hey uh, try to give other people a good time hey uh, having fun is your number one job like all these little things that you're giving people that I think apply across the board for everything and allow them to, you know, talk to people at a party yeah. and not be in their head or uh, to quit their shitty job because they realize that it's worth trying to do something different or like there's all these little success stories that you get from people that go through improv along those lines. And I think that's what I love about teaching it is that it's empowering on some weirdly fundamental level and you talk about people coming in on the first day. I feel like I have to do less of the, the neutral, neutralizing people wanting to be cool. It's, it's just all that like skepticism and hesitancy. and they, They've shown up for this, right? They've decided yeah. to take an improv class. So I feel like they're bought in on some fundamental level already. You just have to help them trust that it's going to be okay. So we do uh, like a thing. We actually have a tool that we do. Anytime we work with any group, that's exactly what you're talking about, where we say, hey, if you're feeling weird about something, put your hands in the air and yell, I failed, and then take a big bow, and everyone in the room is mandated to clap for you. Like, you just, that's the rule. Everybody's going to stop whatever they're doing mm -hmm. and clap like crazy, validating the fact that you put yourself out there, you took a risk, you're feeling weird about it, and we're all saying, yeah, that's the whole point, that's what you're here for, congratulations, good job, and then we move along. And it very quickly sets that tone of support and people taking risks and doing all the stuff that you got to do in that environment. And even in corporate workshops where people have not necessarily opted in, you have to kind of <laughs> slow roll some of the early exercises to just trick them into having fun pretty quickly. Yep. And then you hit them with some of that failure bow stuff and taking risks. And it's very rare that you can't get almost everybody on board. Yeah, it's hard. We we just had a um we just had an interview with a, a gal whose like number one job is to teach like corporate groups, and she is um uh, she works with people and realized that the world of corporate America is sort of the opposite of improv. Like they're in competition with one another. They're working to um. Everybody in an office, whether or not they're considered a team or not, is still in competition with the other people on their team. That's so... It's such a weird way to think about it, because I think that's not actually true, huh. technically. Like, in practice, that's probably how it plays out mostly, but work is a collaborative art form. Like totally. We are working yeah. together to try to create, like, a thing that everybody can uh, benefit from. Mm -hmm. Unless you're working at competing companies, then sure, yes, you are competing. But within the same yeah, company... Yeah, that's true. Like, even if you're vying for jobs, or if there's that, like, competitive aspect about who gets hired or bonuses or th there might be in there but ultimately our job is to make something work mm -hmm. so one of the one of the things that we uh, that I think is an interesting conversation doing the corporate work is yes and right fundamental improv principle that no matter where you study improv no matter what school of improv you're in yes and is a part of it in a corporate environment I think that takes some translation because even if they are collaborating they still do have to fight for control sometimes about whose idea gets used or, you know, uh, regulating on you because we can't do everything, obviously. Resources are limited. We can't just willy-nilly say yes to everything, and, mm -hmm. you know, there, there are consequences. But I th what I say is that you guys are probably saying no too soon. You probably have to say no at some mm -hmm. point, but if there's, like, a boundary where you're saying no, if you push that back and experiment with saying yes more often... You're going to find all these weird, surprising, unexpected, efficient, effective things in that territory. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a, like a negotiation of like where we can say yes and how can we say yes and a little bit more mm, and trying to like make that, that something real for them. Oh, I like that. That's well, really cool. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and that kind of goes to like what 
like what we were talking about in the very beginning about well I mean it might not be on here but like the the drive for like you just need to be the most financially successful you can ever be set up to be so like there's that com- that competition is to like even inside your own company because I mean I I've never worked at a restaurant